Is struggling to lose weight need a fast solution? Is this a big issue that we are facing today in our community? What should you do? Many people struggle with maintaining a healthy diet due to the busy work schedules. Weight loss is also challenging, and statistics show that obesity is a significant issue in North America, including Vancouver, BC. Today, we have invited Dr. Walla, who is a medical weight loss doctor and also certified master life coach, to discuss about this important matter. Welcome to our show, Dr. Walla. Thank you so much, Sherry. Thanks for having me. Uh, Dr. Vala, can you please uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, first of all? Sure, yes. I'm a, uh, I am a bariatrician, a medical weight loss doctor, and a certified master life coach. Uh, I'm also a family doctor, so I haven't been in practice in uh, over 20 years. Uh, over the last couple of decades, I realized that there are huge gaps in our healthcare system. One of them being that we are very focused on curative medicine as opposed to preventive medicine. And that's one of the problems and one of the reasons we cannot catch up with the burden of disease. So I shifted over the last decade or so towards preventive uh, disease. And that's one of the main reasons I became a bariatrician, focusing on obesity and uh, chronic diseases, because that leads to many, many, many other chronic diseases as complications. Which is a big issue today, especially in Vancouver, BC right now. North America is facing actually this issue. And Vancouver, BC yes. is one of the cities that is uh, actually, you know, facing this issue as well. Absolutely. In fact, uh, to be more accurate, BC is actually one of the uh, uh, healthiest provinces oh. in Canada. Yes. One in four Canadian adults are obese, unfortunately. And in BC, one in five, so about 21% of the popul uh, adult population Mm -hmm. is obese. How is the obesity affecting public health in Vancouver, BC? And what community efforts um, are being made to address it? Yes, yeah, so obesity is a, um, I believe it's a pandemic, and not just in Canada, but in many, many countries across the world. Um, if you think, if you take a rudimentary approach, uh, obesity is a fundamental cause that leads to over 100 com complications and chronic diseases such as diabetes, type 2 diabetes, um, heart disease, stroke, um, about 14 types of cancer, chronic liver disease, chronic kidney disease, a depression, you name it. Mm -hmm. uh, so when, as a, when you look at the cause and effect uh, obesity can be a cause to many of these chronic diseases. So you can imagine uh, the burden of uh, disease and the costs that this disease alone can incur in the population. So it is extremely important to understand this and take a rudimentary and a fundamental approach to address the root cause of many of these um, chronic diseases. Like I said earlier, our healthcare system has a major flaw in the design and that needs to be reformed. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we will not be able to catch up with this problem. And the problem is that there we're spending billions of dollars every year on many of these chronic diseases, such as heart disease, cancer, stroke, uh, but it is fragmented care. Instead of 
I'm, I'm not saying, you know, just we, we need to continue addressing those, of course, but we need to put more effort and invest more in addressing the fundamental cause of many of these, which is obesity. And if we do that, we are going to prevent many of these chronic diseases and significantly improve population um, health as well as lower our healthcare costs. I see. Uh, good to know, actually. Uh, now, why do most diets and commercial program fail or bring only short-term results if they are working? So, um, obesity is a lot more complicated than the um, than just uh, eating healthier and the lack of exercise. It is a chronic disease. It's a disease of the fat cell. So there are major factors that lead to this disease. Uh, and um, so diets alone cannot address those. There are many factors and contributing factors, such as genetic factors, such as psychological, metabolic, hormonal effects of other diseases, effects of medications. Unless all of these are addressed in a weight loss program, you cannot see long-term results for the management of obesity. And unfortunately, there is a common misunderstanding and misperception in the public where people for the last probably 30, 40 years have somehow picked up that, oh, all you have to do is go on a diet to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Well, even if it works, it's not going to last long. It's short-term That's results. when they because call it a yo-yo diet. <laughs> exactly, yes. And we see that very, very commonly. So I would say probably about 99% of, of the patients that I see have tried many, many things and keep failing. Mm -hmm. And when I explain the, to them uh, the reason, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, you could put somebody on the best diet, but how can it address all these other contributing factors? So it's a lot more complicated. So what is the solution, Dr. Walla? Well, there's no magic, there's no magic wand. There's no yeah. magic solution, no magic thing, you know. There's no magic medication, mm -hmm. um, sur surgery, or uh, anything else. So what I tell to my patients is that there's no one tool that could fix the problem. It is mm -hmm. the full toolbox that they need. So the best thing that so far works for and brings long-term results is uh, a, a comprehensive weight loss program that addresses all of the pieces of the puzzle. It's the full toolbox, a program that addresses all the lifestyle factors, all these contributing factors that I mm -hmm. mentioned, as well as medication in the right place at the right time, as well as surgery in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. So all of those customized to each individual can bring very uh, long lasting results. And that's what we see in our program. I see. I see. And are there local programs promotion like for healthy and fighting obesity? And how can individuals get involved for this? Absolutely. In fact, there are many programs that is uh, run that are run by the government. Um, uh, bits and pieces here and there. Yeah. However, um, the problem I find is that many of these are fragmented. They're not cohesive. They're not aligned with one another and uh, that they, they address one piece of the pie. As an example, you know, there are, there's, you, uh, the patients can call 811 or BC nurse line or BC health link to access um, um, government paid uh, dietitians but they only get very, very basic information and resources. Uh, and sorry to interrupt, what do you mean? Nutrition. Yeah, sorry to interrupt, what do you mean about government information? Like, I mean, there mean? Probably, okay. there, there's no cost to that, They're, it's free. Oh, okay, so government it's is actually paying government. for? Oh, I see, Correct. I see, yes. okay. Yes. Continue, please. Yes, uh, so there are, there are bits and pieces, or for example, the same uh, line 811, um, can access to physical activity line where patients can get some information about how to do uh, physical activity properly. But again, it's basic and it is not aligned with other uh, resources. So 
one of the gaps is that um, that fragmentation and misalignment of these different resources. What I think would work best and what we have done in our program is to bring everything under one uh, ceiling, under mm -hmm. one ecosystem, mm -hmm. which uh, addresses the, uh, which, um, you know, brings alignment to the different um, sections and addresses all of the pieces of the puzzle. I see. As you know, losing weight is very difficult. Why is that? Why is it so difficult to lose weight and to determine to lose weight, but it's, it's not working? <laughs> yes, in the last couple of decades, there has been a lot of improvement in the science of obesity and uh, weight loss. Uh, like I said earlier, it is much more than just, uh, you know, eat healthier and exercise more. It is, of course, those are important, but they're not enough. Uh, the problem is in the fat cell. So the, there is a, there's a fat cell disorder that happens as we gain weight. The fat cell becomes sick. Mm -hmm. And this fat cell starts secreting a number of chemicals. More than 100 of them have been identified into the bloodstream and affects different organs. That's one of the reasons those chemical uh, toxic chemicals lead to other complications and chronic diseases. Uh, that's one of the reasons. In fact, there are many reasons for the difficulty of uh, weight loss. That That is one. Another reason is the set point theory that is commonly accepted now, meaning that if we uh, stay at the same weight for long enough, it seems to go in the cell's memory and we tend to keep that. So it's a set point theory. That means the body tends to maintain itself at that set point. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I become 400 pounds for long enough, that's the body, that's the weight that my body wants to maintain. And when I start losing weight, the farther I get from that 400 pounds, the more those cells fight. And there are a number of very, very complicated counter-regulatory mechanisms where, uh, w that get activated as soon as I start losing weight. So I have mm -hmm. to fight my own cells. Mm -hmm. It's like so, they say that you're turning on the losing button uh, for your body at that time. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, you know, a patient, and, and I'm using you or myself uh, yeah. as an example, you know, if, if I want to lose weight, I want to lose weight, not my cells. Mm -hmm. My cells don't want to lose weight. That's the, the cell they want to maintain or the weight they want to maintain is what they have been familiar with long enough. Mm -hmm. Now, how, how a person or individual can actually mentally get to that point that to tell to their cell, now it's time to lose weight. Because, you mm -hmm. know, mentally it's so hard. Like you wake up every morning and say, okay, today I'm gonna go exercise, I'm gonna start a healthy diet, but it's not happening. Like, you know, and then one day you're doing it and the next day you're back to the normal and it's not happening. Of so how, yeah, yeah, how can that person be more, uh, you, know, um, you know, definite that they can actually uh, get to that procedure? Yes, so uh, it is extremely difficult as mm -hmm. patients who want to lose weight, they would attest to that. Um, it's easy to lose motivation. It's easy to give up in a program. That's why a long-term comprehensive program is the best solution that's available under the supervision of a trained professional like bariatricians, usually it's the doctors who are trained in all aspects of, of obesity and, and metabolic conditions that are able to uh, uh, address all of these different pieces of the puzzle. So mm -hmm. we suggest, I always tell my patients, the sooner you start, the better. So it's better to be proactive before it gets to 400 pounds, start losing weight when it's 300 pounds or mm -hmm. 250 pounds. As soon as you're overweight, it's easier to deal with than when you become obese, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have class one, class two, class three, and it goes on. Um, it becomes very, very difficult to lose weight. So you need to work with a team. Um, we have a team-based approach and a comprehensive long-term program to work with the patient uh, 
for long term and keep keep them accountable, coach them, work with them constantly. Show them the motivation. healthy lifestyle, I guess. Exactly, and yeah. you want you, we need to keep them accountable and work with them, uh, hold their hands when they go down because it's very easy to lose vote motivation in, mm -hmm. in this journey. It's a long term journey. It it's is. Not a quick fix. It is. It is. A lot of people I know that they they go in, uh, into you know their Google or they just go into a different uh, you know online programs and and how to lose weight fast and how can I lose weight in 10 days or how can I lose the weight in 20 days? You know what I mean? It is very hard and difficult. And some people think, think that with just simple training, uh, going to, you know, gym and do, uh, you know, keto diets or do uh, Dr. Princeton diet or different diets in the world mm -hmm. that they're there, uh, Jenny Craig or you name it. And That's they're right. just going by the, you know, and these advertisements that there are out there, it doesn't make it easier for people to make the right decision and a healthier choice for their new lifestyle. Um, I, I think the best way is to set your brain that you want to have a healthier lifestyle in order to lose weight. So I think, I, I don't know, I might be wrong, uh, you know, maybe... Uh, just setting that way and not saying I want to lose weight per se, you know what I mean? And just I want to have a healthier lifestyle. What do you think? Absolutely. I totally agree with you. In fact, um, one of the early discussions we have with patients is to change their mindsets about uh, and their attitude towards obesity and food altogether. Uh, and exactly that. So instead of focusing on the number on the scale, that should not be the target. That the target should be the goal. The end goal should be uh, health, getting healthier. Uh, and one way to do that would be to lose weight. Um, many of these that you mentioned, we categorize them as commercial, commercial um, programs, mm -hmm. which unfortunately there is a lot of them out there because. Uh, weight loss is a very hot topic and it is. There, there's it's a billion dollar industry and many patients are seeking answers and these days in the 21st century people are looking for quick results and quick solutions I agree. and um, that's the dilemma because it doesn't work that way for mm -hmm. a dilemma it's like and I use the analogy to my patients I say well you know if I ask you to build a high-rise in two months would you be able to do that? That's right. Say, yeah. No. Absolutely say, well, not. You yeah. You yeah. cannot lose weight properly in you, you can, but it's not proper. It's gonna, and you can, it's gonna uh, collapse. Exactly. And you will not be able to maintain it. It is so hard. Exactly. When you actually lose weight quickly, then you won't be uh, able to maintain it. It's not a healthy balance. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So what is the pro and cons of these medications that there are there for lose weight? Yes. Another misunderstanding. You know, we spend a lot of time with, uh, on patient education and helping them to understand and how to navigate the tremendous amount of misinformation and disinformation that is out there mm -hmm. in the social media. Um, uh, there is a trend just last year, earlier last year, I would say probably mid last year, there was a trend on Ozempic. I had numerous patients come in requesting Ozempic and it wasn't even indicated in them. So I had to spend a lot of time educating why it's not a good idea to go on Ozempic and why there's a place for the right person to, to put, I have a lot of patients on Ozempic by the way. So there's a place, there's an indication. There's a lot, right time and right place to use these medication and not just Ozempic, there's there's a number of them that have been approved. And then later in the year, there was a lot of trend again about the disadvantages of Ozempic again. And I had numerous patients coming in saying, oh, oh yeah. I don't want to do that. And you know, and I had some patients whom I thought Ozempic would be indicated and would be a good choice. And they said, No, 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 there's a lot of bad stuff. I said, Oh my bad, God. Yeah. You know, I'm I am so sorry that 
there is so much uh, misinformation and disinformation out there and the public are rightfully confused. And, uh, you know, I think we as professionals have uh, a lot of work to do on educating um, the public. And, you know, with the healthcare system and the pressure on all of us, we're so busy dealing one by one that we there are not too many of us that have the time to raise public awareness and educate the public about what is right and what is not right. Yeah, and especially with Ozempic, um, you know, there was like a lot of, um, you know, information saying that there's a lot of um, uh, side effects and, and how come doctors are prescribing it. It's an expensive medication and, you know, uh, you name it. It is hard to make that decision if you're not actually consulting with the right doctors and you're not mm -hmm. consulting uh, to see what is the good benefit for your body because sometimes people do not know what their body needs and mm -hmm. with the help of a doctor can determine that this body needs this kind of medication, this body needs this kind of uh, you know, uh, diet. So it is important to actually get consulted with your doctor. Absolutely, Absolutely. right. Yeah. If I could, if I could comment on Ozempic, and we are picking on Ozempic because it is, uh, you know, there was a trend about Ozempic, and now there's a shortage of it because of that trend. Um, Ozempic is only one of the several medications that are approved in Canada and U.S. for, um, for, for weight loss and and diabetic patients. Um, OB, Ozempic is not a bad medication. It mm -hmm. has its own place. Every single medication on the planet has potential side effects. Mm -hmm. Potential side effects. There's not a food has potential side effects. You can get food poisoning. So it's important to understand it's not black and white. So when somebody comes and says Ozempic is bad or Ozempic is good, I think. It depends. Mm -hmm. Both of them are right in the right context. So to be more specific on Ozempic, Ozempic is an anti-diabetic agent. It is not originally approved for uh, obesity. One of the at one of the extra effects of uh, Ozempic and other GLP-1 analogs in the same family are uh, it, um, is weight loss. Mm -hmm. So. It is one of the medications that we use in the right patient, which is usually a diabetic who is also obese mm -hmm. and is trying to lose weight. Again, not all diabetics who are obese should be on Ozempic. We have to customize it. And mm -hmm. the only person that can make that and help, um, help the patient make that appropriate choice is a trained doctor. Mm -hmm. Nobody else has the training and the uh, qualifications to be able to uh, guide the patient. It's not social media or, you know, my cousin took Ozempic and lost weight, so I want to take it too. That's not the right approach that we need to take. And we need to raise uh, awareness in the public about these medications. So it's not your choice, it's, prop, it's, it's like any other prescription uh, medication that you need to go to your doctor and get that prescribed from your doctor. You cannot yes. make that decision, oh, I want to take this because it's good for my body. How do you know? You need to talk to your doctor first. Absolutely, exactly. you're right. Um, now, let's talk about, uh, um, about the surgery. There's a lot of different surgeries out there right now, uh, you know, for lo lo you know losing weight. Uh, Let's talk about the terms and those surgeries that there are out there, Dr. Rala. Sure. So uh, if you don't mind, I just want to make a quick comment because I think it's important just uh, to finish off on the Ozempic part. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Absolutely. Uh, Ozempic, yeah. like any medication that is approved, should be used as second line. It's an adjunct therapy. All of these are, are used as the second line for after lifestyle management. So we spend about 70% on lifestyle, advanced lifestyle management, helping patients with the way they eat, their uh, nutrition, physical activity, and all these other lifestyle factors, and about 25% on medications. And one of the several medications that we can use is Ozempic. 
I just see. to be very smart to finish off on that. Yeah, so I to see. answer your question, bariatric surgery is another tool in the toolbox. It is the most powerful tool and most effective, but in the right person. It also, again, has its pros and cons. So there, nothing is 100% good or bad. Mm -hmm. um, currently in Canada and many other countries, uh, there are three main types of um, surgeries that are being um, um, that are happening that are being performed. Uh, unfortunately, the surgery in uh, the waiting list for surgery is huge. In BC, it's about three to five years. Oh wow, <laughs> that's yes, a long yes. time. Yeah. It is. So many of our patients, uh, so what we do actually, I'm not a surgeon, so I don't do the surgery, but I do the pre and post operative care for patients. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. my surgical patients, so the right per person, we, of course, we do the assessment. Once we find a, pa a patient is qualified for surgery, is a good candidate, and they're interested to proceed with surgery, we start the pre operative care. And uh, in parallel, work on the medical management of weight loss until they're ready for the surgical management. So it's not a cosmetic uh, surgery. It's something that is no. actually... Okay. Again, that's... Yes, thank you for bringing that up. It is... Yeah. That's another misunderstanding. So yeah. liposuction, you know, bands, all of these, many of these are cosmetic. They're not bariatric surgery. They do not address the, the fat cell. So about uh, 20 only about 20% of the total fat in our body is called visceral fat. That's mm -hmm. the fat in our belly, in our abdomen. That's what leads to unhealthiness and all of these chronic diseases. About 80% is peripheral fat. So if somebody goes and, you know, takes fat off of their skin, under their skin or under their skin, uh, belly skin, mm -hmm. that's a cosmetic procedure. It's not a bariatric, it's not a medical procedure. It's mm -hmm. not a bariatric procedure. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, lots of misunderstanding. Patients go and uh, have liposuction or other procedures, which is not, um, you know, it, it, it helps. It helps. It can help with cosmetically and make the patient feel better. But if they don't address the underlying factors, that will come back as well. I see. I see. I see. It is, it is good to know. Now, about the, um, you know, um, bariatric surgery, is there any side effects after the surgery or is there any? Of course. Yeah. There's a potential side effects like anything else. Mm -hmm. So about 1% in general uh, may have uh, major side effects and about 5% overall minor side effects. We see a lot of more minor side effects. Uh, such as uh, reflux or indigestion or pain or, um, mm, you know, things like that. So they're m minor. Um, the major ones are, luckily, they're much less common, but they could be very, very serious, like bleeding, um, like infections um, or mm, dehiscence or the, you know, the, the separation of the sutures or internal sutures. Uh, of the organs. So all of those could be potential side effects of uh, surgery. Um, and in the right person, by the right doctor and bariatric surgeon who are very well trained, we have very, very good ones here in BC as well as other parts of Canada. So those risks are minimized. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Vala, you know that in BC, um, everybody is busy working with the time scheduling that they have, it is so hard to follow a right diet. And then it's so hard to follow the right uh, schedule for eating healthier and changing your habits to healthier lifestyle. What do you suggest for those people that have a busy life and it's so hard to go to grocery store and buy this healthy food instead of going to, you know, uh, I don't know, restaurants or fast food restaurants and eat unhealthy food. Yeah, so I just wanted to clarify, I'm opposed to diets. We don't recommend diets at all. So um, it's not about diets, dieting. It's about nutritional counseling and eating properly. 
diets usually tell you what to eat. This is what you eat, A, B, C, D. But what I think is the right thing to do would be about how to eat properly. And once you educate the patient about proper formulas that they can apply in their daily routine, what percentage, how do they uh, divide their plates to get the right amount of macronutrients, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, as an example, mm -hmm. or how do you eat in a day, what interval, um, how much, all of these, there's a lot of science and formulas that we teach patients. Um, we don't tell them to go diets. They can choose any diet they want. In fact, I, like I said, I'm opposed to diet. It's mm -hmm. about eating healthy. And that's only one piece of the pie. That's yes. only one in the toolbox. Um, so like anything else, you know, everybody is busy doing everything else. But also one of those things is eating. Yeah. One of those things is being active. So if they have, if they're busy going to gym, how do you bypass these obstacles? How do you overcome them? You don't have to do, do exercise, by the way, to lose weight. You don't have to go to the gym to lose weight. You don't have to diet to go. Uh, these are all misunderstandings, and they're not true. Mm -hmm. So what we do, we educate patients what they can do to overcome the lack of time. How can they increase their non-exercise physical activity, as an example? So can they park their car three blocks farther and walk to their office, as an example? Could they take the stairs instead of the elevator, as an example? Mm -hmm. uh, all of these little things is a lot of coaching, and that's where my... Uh, uh, that's Yourself and I your team, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, the coaching part, uh, you know, uh, as I mentioned, I'm a certified master life coach. The reason I mentioned it was because a lot of these uh, coaching skills are integrated with the medical skills to come up with this, these programs. And I think that's what makes the difference. I see. I, it is very hard, especially, you know, people get sad, they start eating. They're happy, they're eating. They're emotional, they're eating, you know, okay. and, uh, you know, it's very hard, especially nowadays, um, you know, they said you can't cut carbs or you can't cut protein or you can, you have to have a balance of everything in your diet or in your, you know, healthy choice of a diet. Um, mm -hmm. As you said, yeah, you know, all those uh, promotional uh, advertisements uh, that they're out there, they're telling you, you know, you need to eat once a day or fasting per se. You know, I know that people are starving themselves from, you know, one hour to another, you know, it's like eight hours fasting, 10 hours fasting, 18 hours fasting, and they follow that loop. And uh, by the end of the day, they're starving and they start eating unhealthy, I, I, I think. What do you think about fasting? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what do I think about fasting? Uh, again, there's a lot of misunderstanding. We actually use intermittent fasting and intermittent VLCD or very low calorie diet as one of the tools in the toolbox. But the way we do it is very different than what most people know and what there is being taught on social media, which I believe is wrong. I've had a few patients that have followed the, the common intermittent fasting that was, you know, the 16 hour and eight hour. And uh, I have I have a few patients who actually were damaged and suffered because mm. they did it for a long time under no supervision. They did it on their own and they just- With that app that is on there, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, there is a place for intermittent fasting. That's one of the tools in the toolbox, but it's very, very different than, than uh, there's, there's a right way and a scientific to do that. Mm -hmm. And when, when it's done under supervision, actually it helps a lot. Um, so again, my, my recommendation is the first thing I tell to my patients is, you know, do not listen to the advertisements and the social media. So cut off. If you are in a, in a professional comprehensive program, if you have already uh, gratefully put your trust in our team, then let us help you. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to follow the uh, um, the advertisements. There's a lot of misinformation. And to be able to navigate through that, it's very difficult. So the second recommendation is to the public is 
make sure you work with pro trained professionals and their teams. It's very difficult to do it on your own. Could it be expensive to follow with your, um, you know, uh, dietitians or, um, you know, nutritionist uh, guidance or is it expensive to do that or is it for free? People can actually talk to their doctors for free to do that. Well, they, um, not all doctors can, can uh, are providing these the weight loss services, so it's bariatricians. And as far as I know, I think there are six of us now in BC who are trained and board certified who are offering these. It is uh, MSP covered. There could be some costs um, in certain cases. Um, for example, um, there were some of these allied care providers providers such as dietitians, you know, we have figured out ways to get those covered as well. But mm -hmm. um, as we speak, there is some there are some changes happening in MSB, um, the way some of these services are covered. So uh, it is not expensive. It, I mean, overall, it's not. So the medical program is covered by MSB for most patients. Mm -hmm. And um, what I would recommend if they can come, anybody who's interested can, um, can have an introductory visit, we'll do an assessment. And for most people, it is covered. And we'll explain where if they need dietitians or if they need advanced dietary or other um, team-based approach and care, uh, we will explain some of the resources that are available, but within our team, we have been able to significantly reduce the cost um, compared to outside, and everyone is on the same page as well. Yeah, especially now out there, there's uh, the, all the medications and, you know, diet programs that there are out there. Uh, are so expensive. I know mm -hmm. that a couple of my friends actually, they bought some kind of meal plan uh, with other, you know, programs, as, as, as I said, these advertisement programs, that they pay $500 a week uh, to just for the meal plan. They have lost mm -hmm. the weight. But again, once you stop eating that, you know, uh, meal that has been provided to you, that you gain it again, and gradually you gain it, and sometimes you gain it double, <laughs> you know? So it is hard, I understand yeah. totally what you're saying. Now, any other suggestion do you have to provide for us? Um, again, work with professionals, work with uh, uh, comprehensive uh, programs, bariatricians, any of the uh, bariatricians, their programs are, um, are qualified, and usually they're comprehensive. They take a very scientific approach. Um, the medical, the, the services are actually covered uh, by MSP. So in most cases, there are no charges or very, very minimal charges um, compared to the commercial programs, as you mentioned, that could be very, very expensive and they're not very scientific as well. So I would recommend um, talk to a doctor, talk to a bariatrician, get some advice, um, and you will find out if the program is right for you or not. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Valo. This program, actually, that we decide to do because a lot of people have a lot of questions because of these yo-yo diets and they don't know the right mm -hmm. place to go. Uh, we thought uh, we should just speak to you and maybe uh, not only in this session, but we could have another session to talk about this uh, important issue that is happening right now and people do not know the right way. A lot of people think that they do, but, you know, when they're listening to you and to this kind of programs, they can learn more and educate themselves as well. So it is crucially important uh, for us to get educated. Um, I'm just um, very happy and excited that we had this opportunity and you could share your, um, you know, uh, your experience with us. Uh, is there anything that you want to share with our audiences? Please uh, go ahead. No, that's it. I wanted to thank you uh, for providing this opportunity and helping to raise awareness. Uh, it is extremely important for public awareness and getting the right information. Um, 
I would be more than happy to collaborate with you if there's a need for future sessions. If uh, you know Definitely, listeners yes. have more questions, I'll be more happy to pursue. And if they wish to contact us for further information, um, I guess they can. Um, Get our well, I, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, if uh, anyone uh, would like to have any questions for you or if they have any suggestions or if they want to be in contact with you, they can actually uh, call us or email us at SkyRiseMediaSociety at gmail.com. And you, you guys can make your comments and suggestions and your question for Dr. Walla. And for next session, we definitely will uh, provide these questions to Dr. Vala, and he can answer that for you guys. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Vala, for being in our show. I really do appreciate it. Uh, and we'll just uh, thank you guys for watching and see you next time. Thank you so much again for having me.